Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Enjoy the Walk podcast. We are happy to continue our U.S. Open coverage this week uh, with second on our list here, Eric Barnes. Uh, Eric came through sectional qualifying uh, and got himself a place at the U.S. Open this up-and-coming week at Brookline. Uh, Eric, you have been an absolute stud this year on the Corn Ferry Tour, so pumped to uh, just talk about your year so far and your expectations going into the U.S. Open. So, Eric, appreciate you joining us this evening, man. How are you doing? Yeah, man, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, I've been in Boston for a couple of days, just trying to get my feet uh, acclimated and kind of get a feel of the place. So it's uh, it's been a good couple of days here. Yeah, I know uh, your your post sectional uh, qualifier interview was uh, you were just excited to see how your game stacks up with the best in the world. So um, you know, pumped to, to watch you over the the next few days and see how that does. Um, have you been able to get out in the course and just uh, and get your feet wet with inside the atmosphere? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, played yesterday. I played the, I guess I played the first twelve holes, and then today I played the back nine. So I've seen the whole golf course now in a practice round. I'll probably play them all again tomorrow and kind of do a light day Wednesday. But yeah, man, the place is gonna be hard. It's gonna be, it's gonna be real hard. <laughs> now, is this your first U.S. Open experience? It is. It sure is. Yeah. So what, um, you know, m- myths, legends, things like that, have you maybe been able to dispel since kind of walking through and maybe which ones are confirmed uh, since uh, since getting to play the whole golf course? Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't think that like I I can dispel anything. Uh, it's kind of what you expect, man. Like, well, currently. OK, so one thing, I guess, currently it's not that firm yet. So the greens are fast already but they're not crazy fast and there's a lot of pitch on some of these greens like there's places on these greens they just cannot use so um i'm anxious to see how much faster they get but they're not firm yet and when they get firm i mean this place is gonna be hard even par is gonna be a real good score but uh you know it's it's funny we were talking to um a, a caddy for for brandon matthews right before we came on here um and he was telling us the same thing like there's very little pin placements on a lot of these greens and he, and he's contemplating pretty much saying the same thing of i don't know how fast they can make them just because of how undulated some of these greens are yeah especially if they get really firm i mean because I mean, just pitching, like, pitching around the green with the as long as the rough, it's not that long yet. I mean, it's not like Marion um, a couple years ago, but, like, it's different. Like, like, Torrey last year, right? Like, that golf course is literally wide open. I mean, it's just got fairway, green, some bunkering, and rough. Mm-hmm. Other than some of the holes of the water on it, I mean, this golf course is not like that. Like you cannot hit it 20 yards off the fairway. You are not hitting it. Well, I mean, you can hit it, but you might only hit a couple feet. You know, I mean, we've got a margin of rough and then I ask you. And uh, it's just like the fairways are moderately generous. Like they're not like Marion where they were like 20 yards wide. Mm-hmm. But like if you miss them, you're going to pay the price. Well, and I think as we as fans look at that and say, well, that's the way the U.S. Open should be, right? If it, that's what oh, we yeah. all look forward to watch on TV, um, you know, and you said you got on Saturday. Um, and what are your expectations for the next couple of days of, of just prep? And, and what's the look uh, for you going to be? Are, are you really grinding out there all day long or is it following pretty much your, 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 your normal routine that you'd see week in and week out on the Corn Ferry Tour? Well, this week is so different than like a normal week, right? Because you're going to see conditions you just don't see every week. Um, so, like, I actually am going to put a seven wood in my bag this week. I haven't played a seven wood in ever. Like, and the reason is, is because, you know, that, that famous, like, choppy wood shot out of the rough kind of film made famous there for a little while. Like, you can actually advance a seven wood. But, if, like, a four iron, you got no chance, right? Like, you're just going to hit it right in front of you. So, for the most part, like, there's, like, today was the day where I kind of tinkered around, like, I really got a feel around the greens to, like, how I have to play certain shots. Mess If there was anything within my uh, bag that needed looked at, like, the seven wood over the driving iron, like, driving iron's, like, almost useless this week. Um, things like that. But uh, as for the next couple of days, like tomorrow, I'm just going to – I just try to play as many holes as possible. Like I'm trying not to stand on the range for two hours and beat balls, you know, because, I mean, it, 
you know, you need to get out there and put yourself because you, no matter what, like you're not getting the same light twice. And there's so many different things that can happen on this golf course and so many different places you can hit it that I just need to play as many holes as possible without, you know, overdoing it just to yeah, kind of get my, you know, my bearing straight and understand kind of how difficult it's going to be. And also to see how the course progresses from Saturday to Monday to Wednesday to Friday. It's kind of like you said, it's not a course that you normally with the setup Oh, you play on a week to week basis. So like you said, you're, you're tinkering with clubs. I mean, you can honestly hit, you can go to range anywhere around yeah, the world. Exactly. I mean, you can beat balls as much as you want, but I like that strategy because that's how I kind of got better at golf of my better at golf myself is just playing my course over and over and over again. And I, I like that strategy where you're just like, you know what, I'm just going to go out and play this course because this is not a setup I play on a normal basis. Right. And also like for me, you know, not playing the PGA tour every week, I needed to get here early and like just get comfortable because I'm not going to be comfortable. I mean, let's just face it. I mean, is anybody really comfortable in the U.S. Open ever? Like, I guess unless the you USGA got, like, a five makes shot sure lead. they are. <laughs> you know, I mean, unless you got like a five shot lead and you're in the middle of the fairway on 18, like I don't know that anybody's going to be comfortable all week. But like, I mean, heck, there's there's 10, 20,000 people out here on Monday. You know what I mean? They're hollering at you, teeing, teeing off on 15 on a Monday. So like, wow, you know, just trying to get used to like all the people and the cars and the carts and everybody running around, just trying to get, you know, acclimated. That's really cool. And it's something I think a lot of people don't think about is right. Like even your practice rounds at a U.S. Open are just so bar none different um, than any any week to week you're going to find. Even on the PGA Tour, I'd, I'd find it tough, tough press, maybe than other the waste management to find 20,000 out on a on a Monday afternoon watching guys right. play. Yeah, man, it's crazy. Um, it's just a cool event, you know. I mean, so far it's been a lot of fun. I've got to see a lot of guys I haven't seen in a long time, and uh, you know, some guys that um, good friends of mine that you know either Monday qual, you know, sessional qualified in, or have been playing the PGA Tour the last few years while I've been on the Corn Ferry. Or so it's been fun to get to see some guys and uh, and uh, just kind of be uh, you know around the best players in the world. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I can only imagine that experience is going to lead to just better, um, you know, awareness of, of where you're at and, and how your game stacks up over um, over the next few years. And I'm sure you'll continue playing at this high level. Um, take us back. You mentioned sectionals there. Um, where did you play sectionals and, and what was that day like? You know, I know 36 holes in one day. Really, really tough competition. We saw some of the events, you know, 12, 13 under was was getting through. 11 under was the cut at some events across the country. Um, where'd you play and what was that experience like for you? Yeah, so I played a, a really, really good golf course at the Atlanta side. I played uh, Anzi, Ansley Golf Club at Setting Down, I think is what it's called. Uh, phenomenal golf course. I mean, it, two round total, six under got through. Uh, but uh, yeah, I had to go to a playoff. Uh Matt McCarty hooped about a 25 footer on his last hole to force me and Pat because I had to play off with him for two spots. So fortunately it was a, it was a two spotter with three guys, but someone's not getting through. And uh, yeah, man, it was a long day. Cause the day before I was in Raleigh, North Carolina and that's where I kind of secured my PGA tour card for next year. And uh, literally did that interview, a couple of interviews, literally jumped in the shower at the club, Jumped on a plane to Atlanta. I got back to where I was trying to go at like 1030. And I was like an 810 tea time the next morning. So you wow. know, I was right away, just right after it again. And uh, I think it was kind of a good thing, though. You know, I didn't have time to settle or just, you know, it's kind of like right back into game mode, you know, like other than laying my head down for about six hours, you know, I was right back in game <laughs> mode, right, right back in game mode. But that, that's uh, awesome, man. When you talk about riding a high like that, knowing you're getting your tour card, uh, leaving an event and no more than 12, maybe 14 hours later, putting a peg in the ground and saying, all right, let's do it all over again and, and, and go compete. Um, it, do you guys find that kind of setting more often than not, especially for the Corn Ferry Tour players that are bouncing around trying to play in majors and play in other events? Is, is that setting pretty pretty normal for you guys to have to travel and then kind of have that short change and go play again uh, early the next morning? Yeah, I mean, not really, because, I mean, we don't – I wouldn't say a bunch of guys go do Mondays on the PGA Tour very often during the season, because obviously everybody that plays Corn Ferry Tour has the same goal. And at the end of the year, being inside the top 25 and advance to get your PGA Tour card. So, you know, like for me, I've not been a big Monday qualifier guy. I mean, I may be done 
two Monday qualifiers a year in the fall. But, like, as far as, like, dude, chasing them in the middle of the season, that's just something I haven't done. And uh, so, no, not necessarily. That's not, like, a normal thing. Usually, you know, you're kind of traveling on Monday morning and you kind of get to where you're going. Maybe you putt and chip in the afternoon Monday at the new site. But um, to be honest, like, it almost just felt like it was, like, a the final round somewhere. You know, it's because, like, I literally played and then, you know, back to back. You know, we get so used to playing so much golf. It's kind of it's kind of almost normal. Yeah, it's it's crazy to think, and it's just it, from myself playing in a few U.S. Open locals and having a good friends of mine, you know, advance the sectionals and then um, you know just fall short um, of, of getting to the U.S. Open by a stroke or two here or there. Um, when you fall into a playoff scenario like that, obviously two for three, and you're just battling to not be that guy that's mm. on the outside looking in what's the mentality on on the tee box knowing that there's three guys standing here and whether it's one hole whether it's three holes or however long it takes i just cannot be that guy what's the mentality as you as you go to hit that tee shot yeah honestly it was a par five uh and i was patent could have reached probably but it was pretty much dark i mean sunset <laughs> was 8 42 and we were teeing off at 8 45 so it was like pretty much dark um is a par five and I was just like full go mentality. Like if I could, even though the second shot is all forced carry over water, I was pretty much full go. Like you got to make birdie, you know, cause Matt McCarty is a hell of a wedge player. It's like, and putter. So like, he's going to hit it. He's going to lay it up guaranteed. He's going to wedge it in there to where he's going to have a good look for birdie. So the odds of him making birdie are fairly high. Um, so I just did, you know, I knew I needed to make birdie. Whether or not that advanced me to another playoff hole or got me through on that first hole, I didn't know. But I was pretty sure Birdie wasn't losing. You know, because <laughs> especially after Matt McCarty knowing he got to lay up and Patton laid up. So I had a great, great drive down there and I had like 277 hole and uh, it's pretty much dark. And <laughs> Like it was so dark through my rangefinder. I have that new Bushnell rangefinder where it kind of flashes red. I could not pick up the flag. Like it was too dark. Oh, wow. I couldn't see the flag through the rangefinder. That's dark. But I was able to, you know, kind of guess where it was. And after like two minutes of trying to find it, I finally picked it up. But um, I hit my three wood farther than that. Yeah, because I hit stock flat draws. And you don't really want to go over the green either. Especially it's dark. So, like, if you don't hit it in the fairway, like, say you hit it over the green in the rough, you can you really tell how good your lie is? You know, your depth perception is just that much worse. So, like, I didn't want to just stomp three wood over the green and, like, risk hitting it in the back hazard or, like, having a sketchy lie in the rough. So, I looked at my caddy. I was like, I got to hit a shot that I don't hit a lot of. I don't hit a ton of cuts. I mean, I can cut it well when I need to, but I don't do it. And uh, I just – aimed at the left side of the green, just tried to hit a high fade. And I mean, this thing came out perfect. I mean, it was light enough to where you could still see the ball. You know, like you knew where it was going, even though you couldn't see it on the ground. And I knew it was good. Like it had to be good. There was no way it was not going to be good. And this thing came up like it probably flew 25 feet short of the hole, but like there's this huge ridge in the middle of the green and it flew straight into that ridge. And had it flown, flown short of that ridge, it would have just trickled right over that ridge and it had been a really good look at Eagle. But it ended up hit flying straight into that hill and just kind of stand there. So I had to kind of put up and over. But like I said, and I, I mean, you know, after it was all said and done, Birdie was good enough to advance to, to uh, the U.S. Open. Love that. That's uh, man, when it's dark like that and you got to go play a par five, uh, it just so many things can go wrong and you just got to trust what you brought at the end of the day. Um, yeah. So re really cool to hear that story and just that you let one fly. No, no, oh, yeah. uh, no hole. Yeah. Yeah. No laying up there. Like just got to hit it, man. <laughs> I love it. Why I not? It, right. Yeah. So what's, um, you know, you see the course now you, you got through, you've seen the course a couple days left before you tee it up. Um, you know, you've got your pairings too. Uh, are you playing with anybody, you know, or are you playing with someone maybe you're excited to get out there and play with? Yeah. So I'm actually playing with Matt McCarty, the guy that I got through the qualifier <laughs> with. Oh, nice. So Matt McCarty and I are the ones who advanced out of that that playoff uh, there in Atlanta for the third and fourth spots uh, advancing. And uh, I'm paired with him. And I don't know the other guy. I guess some amateur, uh, Thor Bjorsen or something like that. I don't know him at all. Um, 
But, uh, man, I'm just looking for – the tee times are great. Getting first off, that's unbelievable. Like, I kind of ex- was expecting, you know, 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock, you know, back of the way stuff. But um, getting 6.30 first off Thursday morning, that's awesome. You know, maybe get out get out there to a hot start and, you know, before it gets too crazy out there and I get too uncomfortable. So, hopefully, uh, I can get out there off to a hot start and just kind of see how it goes. Yeah, it's awesome, man. I mean, as as we love to get out there early in the mornings and play our own rounds and get around in like two and a half, three hours. Maybe you Absolutely. guys might not do that, but uh, you can set the pace yeah. nice and early and have some fun. Yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody's playing a U.S. Open round in two, two and a half hours. But <laughs> hey, four hours, four and a half, five hours, it's all good, too. I mean, you That's get it, man. you get off to a hot, hot start, man. You can just put it on cruise control. <laughs> man, I, I tell you what, I just – I think at the U.S. Open, there is no cruise control. You True. literally just kind of like – Different mindset from – You know, I watched that thing on TV today where I think it was Daniel Berger was like, the U.S. Open is like the hardest hole you've ever played 18 times. So, like, you know, it just is. I mean, it's just hard. Like, if you don't hit it in the fairway, you don't feel like you can hit it on the green. And if you don't hit it on the green and you don't hit it in a very good spot, you're just not going to get it up and down. So, like, you just got to avoid making double bogeys. If you – Five is not going to kill you in a U.S. Open because you're going to make some birdies. So, like, as long as you don't, like, start making doubles and triple bogeys, you can just kind of, you know, hang in there, see what happens. Even par makes a lot of noise at most U.S. Opens. I'll just I'll um, say that. I'll tell you what, I'd sign up for even par after sending two holes right now. Just see what happens. I think you and the rest of the field, Eric. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, hey, we appreciate the time when you joining us. Um, guys, be on the lookout. Eric Barnes uh, making his debut at a U.S. Open. Eric, we appreciate the time. Best of luck out there in Boston this week, and uh, hopefully we'll see you come late Saturday, Saturday, Sunday afternoon. Uh, yeah, man. Coverage. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. That's the stuff. One shot at a time.